Dear Locke, when I reflect on the person that I am today, I think of you. I think of all your best moments, the moments that I never wanted to come down from. From the days of my youth spent climbing your trees, which made me feel larger than I actually was, or the summer days spent by the river skipping those stones which seemed to leap endlessly before falling into a crater of ripples. But I also think of those lows you stuck me in, such as those unforgiving days when the sun would relentlessly beat down on my skin, and those other times when the storms flooded the same crop fields we worked so hard to preserve. Little did I know that this small town would have such a large impact on my life. What we've been through together, I never thought that we would be able to save enough money for our family. Do you remember when I first arrived in America? You made it happen for me after the Japanese invasion. It wasn't so easy, though. I remember being stuck on Angel Island for almost two months. Interview after interview. Goodness, how did I manage? I always think about how grateful I was that I was not sent back to China and I was able to come here safely. I'm glad our children didn't have to grow up there during that time. If the war didn't happen, though, I would have gone straight back. We could have raised our children there. We could have owned a nice plot of land. I used to think about that a lot. America gave us safety from the Japanese invasion, but it did not protect us from the discrimination and violence from Caucasians. Bing Fai Chao would talk about being pelted with stones whenever he left Lok, all because he was Chinese. It also makes me mad to think about it. All the times Chinese workers would get blamed for problems that happened in places like the cannery, we couldn't even argue back with them because we didn't know English. I don't know why they hated the Chinese so much. We are all people, all the same. It made no sense. Locke is the only thing that protected us. There is a mean white cook at a cannery who always judge all of us Chinese workers. He insults us every day. We had to deal with that. He judged me for leaving Everett and Dan while they were still crying. He told me that I do not care for them as a mother every time he saw me drop them off. This always hurt me every time. I tried to stay strong anyways because the rest of my day was just work, work, work. One day, he went up to me and said straight to my face. I think he said something like, Why do you keep leaving your kids here crying like that? I say you're an uncaring mother for a reason, but you don't do anything to even help them. I remember I stood there silent. Then he said, of course you wouldn't say anything, chink. I, I am ashamed to say this, but I only make one dollar an hour. The wage is barely enough to feed myself every day. I should not have taken your treatment for granted. You treated me like such a good child. I miss being home and not having to work in the real world. America is not what everyone says it is. I haven't even seen any gold. It is not a gold mountain. All we do is work on the fields. Everyone loves their Chinese restaurant here, and the brothels seem to be a hit with the white men. Food and women, what more could they want? At the Star Theater here, the women work from the stairwell to be available. I know some of the men fall in love with the women. They are exotic to them and offer them some love in any form that they pay for. There's nothing wrong with wanting a warm body close. Before Laia Ying died, she said to me she wanted to be spread in the Golden Mountain, her new home. She said she loved China too, but Golden Mountain gave her a simple hard life that she learned to love. She enjoyed people of Loch the most. She said they were a family away from home. Going through the streets, I can still hear all the chatter, the laughter that took place. I remember the drunks, the stores, all the many businesses that used to tend to all the customers. It's sad knowing that the town won't be like this anymore. But now that I'm much older, I can't walk or bike any further than the sign of lock. I think it's that stupid hill. It just tires me out. <sighs> I just wish you could see it all now. It's practically a ghost town. I will miss you, lock. I think it is time for me to separate myself from you completely. But still keep you deep in my heart since you were once a part of me. Yours truly, Carol.